All right, welcome back. In this video, we are learning about how to find the probability that a certain node in a network diagram for a PERT problem will have a certain float or slack. Uh, some people say float, some people say slack, it's the same thing. Uh, so what we, how we do that is we, uh, we have this equation down here. It's a little bit different than the ones we've been using, uh, but first of all, we have x here, and x is just the float that we're considering. And the ES here is, uh, this is what's called the event slack. It's just the late time minus the early time. So in the example of uh, this node D complete, it would be 24.2 minus 20. Uh, and just don't get that confused with the early start. It stands for event slack. Then down here on the bottom, uh, this term here, the sum of V subscript TE, this is just the variance of the path that created the early time. So what you do is you come along, let's say again we're looking at this node D complete, you just sum up all of the variances that you would have taken to get to the early time. So it would be 1.36 plus 2.25 plus 1. That's all that is. And then this term here, uh, well this is just the variance of the path that created the late time. So you would just start at the end and you would, if we're again, if we're looking at node D complete, uh, you would just sum up the variances along the path that you took to get the late time. So it would be 0 0.44 plus uh, 1.36, and that's all that would be. So now let's do an example then. Let's find out uh, what is the probability, actually we've been talking about this node uh, D complete. Let's say what is the probability that this node called activity D complete has a float that's greater than 0. So we'll just need to fill out all of the variables that we have here in this equation. So first of all we have x, and then we'll have the variance of the path that created both the t time early and the time late. So here x, we're considering a float, we're asking what is the, the prob probability that the node has the float greater than zero. So in that case, x will be zero. Uh, the variance of the, the sum of all the variances along the TE, so that would be 1.36 plus 2.25 plus 1.0, which gives us 4.61. And then for the other guy here, if we just sum up all the variances along the path that it took us to, to get the late time, it would just be 0 0.44 plus 1.36. All right, so now what we can do is we'll just go and we'll fill in our equation here. So we have z is equal to 0 minus our event slack. Actually, our event slack was here, 24.2 minus 20. So we can just write that in here, 24.2 minus, minus 20. All right, and we'll divide that all by the square root of 4.61. 4.61 plus, oh, I didn't actually answer that. That was uh, that guy there, that's 1.8. All right, 1.8, so we have 4.61 plus 1.8. Take the square root of all that. So we'll just simplify this in one step. So we'll just get uh, negative 4.2 over the square root of 6.41. And then if you just punch that in your calculator, what you will get is you will get a value of negative 1.66. All right, so this is our z-score. So again, we're going to take this z-score to our z-score table, and we'll find the probability that this corresponds to. So let's scroll down. Uh, z-score. All right, here we go. So we have negative. Our value was, uh, what was it? Negative 1.66. So let's switch colors so you guys can see what's going on here. So we find negative 1.606. So if you combine those, you get negative 1.66, which is what we have. And then you come down, and you find where they meet. And it's going to be this guy, 0 0.0485. So let's write that down first of all. So we get the this probability, probability of z is equal to 0 0.0485. So now let's figure out what that means. Well, if we centered this mean here at uh, around our event slack, which I believe was 4.2. All right, so we had 4.2. Uh, and then uh, we put zero here. So what this is saying, this is saying that the probability of our uh, of us getting less than zero slack is actually uh, multiply this by 100%, so that'll be 4.85%. Doesn't really make sense uh, to have uh, less than zero slack, but mathematically, with uh, with the distribution, that it's a thing. Uh, so what we need to actually we're concerned is what is the probability uh, of actually this non-shaded area here, this one that I've colored in blue. Uh, and that would just be, uh, as we know from before, that was 1 minus the probability of hitting the shaded area. So we would have 0 0.0485. And if you do that subtraction, uh, we'll actually get 0 0.9515. So that means that we're getting a 95.15% chance um, of of having a slack greater than zero on this activity. And that, that makes sense. There should be an extremely high probability 
uh, that we will be getting slack because this, if you look up here, we colored, we highlighted the critical path here in red. Uh, and this node here is actually the only non-critical node in the entire project. So all of these other ones, uh, we expect them to have uh, no slack. Uh, but we're expecting this one to have 4.2 days of slack. So the fact that um, we have a 95.15% chance of having any slack at all, well, that's appropriate. We should be expecting a high, a high probability of having slack for a node that's not on the critical path.